What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having an amazing day. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Pixel Q Beta 3 GSI port for our phones. Like this almost works on any kind of treble phone, whether it would be System A only, System A, B or System as root. It just works on any kind of phone. So currently, as you can see in my hand, I have a System as root phone and a System A, B phone. I have actually tried this on a couple of uh, System A only phones like the Redmi Note 5 Pro or the Redmi Note 4 and they just work like charm. Well, the stability of this GSI really depends on your vendor. For example, on the left, I am actually using MIUI stable vendor. Like literally, it just works flawless for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Surprisingly, whereas some of the phones are not even able to boot on their stock vendors at all, they need a Pixel Experience CAF vendors and stuff. On the right, I have a initial Pi implementation vendor, which was kind of based on Lineage OS 16 for the MI1. Oh, here fingerprint scanner and everything just works fine. As you can see, I can swipe down even on it. But on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, as this is the stock MIUI vendor, fingerprint scanner is just dead. Also, the brightness is a bit twitchy, but as this is a much powerful and a bigger phone, we will just take a look at over here. So as you can see, this just works and boots pretty much flawless over here. The GSS are pretty much no fixed. It's been like two to three days that Pixel Q Beta 3 has been launched. I just yesterday reviewed the official GSI. If you want to check that, just press the I button over here. But this is the ported one from the Irfan. So these actually come with Fusion's treble dose features and stuff and just made sure to work on pretty much all the phones. So as you can see, I have the Pixel Gestures working over here this is a I guess pixel 2 port and you can also have it as a generic system image which I actually reviewed yesterday but this just works even flawless like the performance and stuff is just on par but as you can see the brightness just blows up whenever the screen goes out of timeout as you can see the brightness has stages but surely works for some part so we will just Keep it that over there and then again let's just take a look at the changes of what we get when compared to the AOSP one because not all the features that were announced at the IO are present over here. So taking a look at the status bar over there as you can see we got much more bolder font again the battery looks just good over there with the transparent dish icon then again just expanding into the quick settings panel if you just expand it once more you have Q beta toggle over here which is pretty great you also get build number over here again the edit button is now on the left you have pretty much normal toggles as you can see nothing lot added you have mobile data and stuff pretty much working over here then again you have dark theme toggle which is again completely black as I told you guys yesterday for the pixel phones it's not dark like a grayish theme as pixel phones have AMOLED panel it does really help getting like a one hour more screen on time at least on my Galaxy S10 plus with the black theme but black theme over here just doesn't apply to all the apps just like the one UI they have to be still yet updated but then again going through another toggles pretty much nothing you just get your grayscale and stuff from the digital well-being which is rumored to be slowing down pixel phones which is just weird so if you have digital well-being if you have any kind of toggle to just turn it off on your OS of phones just turn it off your phone will be much more better but then again you have phone ringer state on the left rather than being in the middle and just disappearing you have the phone carrier on the right pretty good over there but let's just close again you have a notification so again if you want to dismiss it just on the left you have also manage over there but if you want to snooze them or anything just swipe on the right and now you have gentle and interruptive with newer icons but then again if you want them just to be normal you can keep it on gentle or just interruptive which is pretty good or just turn them off completely you can apply the option over here pretty great it just takes a bit of a time to getting used to then again this is a pixel live wallpaper but then again going through the left you have google now again the touch works really great over here for the redmi note 7 pro i mean it's not the best or when compared to the auction os it's still like miui the scroll feels sluggish but then again just going through the apps the performance is just on par it doesn't feel as fast as the aosp gsi which you took a look at yesterday cause this is a portrait rom of course but still if you can see over here the stock apps open pretty great then again if you just take a look at the photos app and stuff the app opening times are pretty impressive to be honest over here as you can see then again the apps look much more longer thanks to the smaller napper but seriously what the hell is that why is still there a bar over there you can literally just swipe up geshers are now completely a ripoff of miui and they don't actually work even as great as miui miui is just like much more optimized especially the 10.3 but then again even in miui you can't actually back over here and here so that if you just go to any kind of third party app, if you have to scroll over here, now it just goes back. I have to actually now tap this icon in order to go to the sidebar. This just doesn't happen in MIUI cause in MIUI you can't actually back on these portions of the screen which is a very nice thought by the MIUI devs. I seriously don't know what Google is doing but pretty much you have these apps over here. You don't get Magix and Kernel Auditor of course but I have actually even installed the open camera cause the Gcam just doesn't work on the Redmi Note 7 Pro no matter which Gcam you try it's just dead but Gcam does actually work even though if you're using one from the Android Pie or Oreo 
you have to just find the right one for your phone but then again coming back you have your volume panel and stuff still there is no live transcribing even in this build which is a bit weird but i can't actually just find it if you guys know how to enable it just let me know in the comment section below but if you go to feedback and stuff the apps now actually work which is pretty great that Irfan's bits didn't actually had this working these had to be removed in order to boot the gsi but now they just work fine even the tips and support option over here at the bottom which is really great on the devs part but still there are some features that redmi note 4 and redmi note 5 pro users aren't actually facing like you can actually just log into any kind of secured Wi-Fi on those devices, but over here I have to actually use an open Wi-Fi hotspot from my S10 Plus. I just can't actually log in into a secured Wi-Fi even on the MI1. So this bug might not actually occur on your phone. This is just based on the vendor. But just going back in general, you have Fusion settings over here, which do actually come in handy. Then again, just going back, you have normal settings over here. If you go to the apps and notifications, if you go to the notifications, notification assistant is now added over there. But still, the implementation of it doesn't really work as same as the Google's I.O. event. It's still yet to be tweaked for the third party apps. It does work on the Google Messenger, I guess. We still have to check that, but normal permission manager and stuff. If you go to the battery, the battery drain without a SIM, like normal idling of the phone is just amazing. I just charged it to 100%, woke up after 12 hours, which, um, sorry guys, my eyes are still swelling, so I sleep a lot, but the battery drain is just non-existed over here, like literally, last full charge 12 hours ago, still 100. Like, that is just amazing. And even right now, I'm using this phone on a performance mode, still it's only 97% on 40 minutes of screen usage. Android Q is going to be great. But then again, going through display, you have more options over here when compared to the AOSP. Well, not more. Adaptive brightness is still broken over here. I have actually flashed a patch for it, but doesn't seem to be working. But then again, you have night light, basically normal stuff. You have theme over here. If you select it to dark, it just goes completely black. Now you have a purplish kind of tint. It's not completely blue accent, but if you go back, it's completely black. Like if you have a AMOLED phone, like if you're using this on a Mi 8 or stuff, this is really great. But let's just go back to light. And it switches pretty fast, which is nice. If you go to the sound, pretty much everything is just the same. Nothing at all has been changed. I mean, this panel looks a bit newish, like some things are renamed. But if you go back, storage and stuff, it's just permission manager and your ad settings from the Google accounts and stuff. Pretty normal. If you go down location, security, oh, here there is no fingerprint scanner cause the Redmi Note 7 Pro vendor is just broken on that part. But the fingerprint scanner does actually get detected as you can see over there. But if your vendor supports it, so like the MI1, surely you will have all the biometrics, like even the smart lock has face unlock, security patch, May 5, and yes, this does have the implementation of mainline updates, so security patch will be getting from Play Store, yep, that's just amazing. But I guess that's not rolling until official Android Q rolls out, like the stable version, but if you scroll down, digital well-being and stuff is still the same, nothing tweaked at all over here. Then going down to the system, gestures there is one gesture missing over here from the fingerprint if you have that working you will have the fourth option but just going to the system navigation now you have three options you are three button navigation like the normal nav bar two button navigation from the pixel 3 which is still hectic like why we still have a nav bar we use gestures to have an immersive look if you are still going to put up a bar what's the use of a gesture but here is the full gestures as you can see they completely work over here. If you want to go back, again, just like iPhone X, swipe it up. If you just go inside an app, the animations are now much more fluid with this gesture. Again, if you want to go to the recent task panel, here you go. Now, you can't actually switch between apps fully, but you can actually go through the previous app or just all the apps like this. It's a bit glitchy, as you can see. As you should know, Google has so many devs, but they just never get anything working at the first point. This like never happens with Huawei or MIUI. I don't know about Huawei, but they're pretty good in announcing features just like Xiaomi, but let's just go back. Going to the advanced, nothing much system update, Android 10 officially, May security patch. Then again, scrolling down, you have tips and support as I told you guys, going to the about phone section. Android version 10 still has the Easter egg from Android Pie, as you can see, like the PQ 2A, you have the sketchboard and stuff. Coming back, mainline software update 29. So I really don't know how they're counting these, like from the start, like since 2016 or not. 
And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the Pixel 2 port of QGSI Beta 3. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want this helpful, please drop a like. Again, if you want the installation of this thing, it's pretty much easy. I will leave a link in the description for the installation video or just press this I button. But basically in this GSI, once you boot up, you have to actually just use any kind of another wallpaper, just not these live wallpapers from the Pixel 2 cause they will cause a lot of lag. Like especially these six right over here, you can actually use these ones and they just don't cause the lag. But once you boot it, just change the wallpaper and you will be okay. And see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Share this video with your friends. That would be a great help. Peace.